Kia ora and welcome to this quick video that looks at how we can use trig functions to model real world situations. So I'm going to do question 51 from New Lake, which is this one here. The water level over the Whanganui River is best modelled by a sine curve. The depth reaches a maximum at 4.30 in the morning of 6.6 .6 metres and a minimum at 10 o'clock in the morning of 2.1 metres. Form an equation based on the time since midnight to model the water depth. So just some basics to remember. There's my basic sine curve, right? And remember that that's very badly drawn, but that's the rough idea. The zero point is at zero, zero. We're going to take that sine curve and we're going to transform it. And we're going to have four bits of that transformation. So we looked at this in class on Thursday, but now we're putting it into real life. So the, the four coefficients in here, the A is the vertical stretch factor. Right? The C is looking at the horizontal shift. The D is looking at the vertical shift, okay, as opposed to A, which is the vertical stretch. And the B is the horizontal stretch. So two stretches and two shifts. And we're going to go really slowly and just put the information on and gradually we'll, we'll work out those coefficients. But before we do that, we're working with a time question. So I'm going to call the variable T. We need to be careful, as we have been at level 1 and 2, to turn our times into decimals. So 4.30 we're going to think of as 4.5. And 10 o'clock is easy, that's just going to be 10. Okay, so let's um, go onto a new slide and we'll just start doing a very rough sketch. Okay, so here's my sketch. I've got T along here. I'm going to mark it out in, let's think. So I want to have 24 hours for one full cycle. Here's 0, here's 24. So let's go in... 6 hour blocks, so that's about halfway at 12, there's 6, and there's 18. Right, now what can we put on our picture? Well, we know the maximum is at 4.30, and it's up at 6.6 .6 metres. So we'll put 6.6 .6 up here, and it's at 4.30, so we'll pop, pop that about there. So that's at 4.5. And we know the minimum's at 10, and the minimum's down at 2.1. Right, so the first thing I think about when I'm doing these is where's the midline going to be? So that's 2.1. So where's my dotty line in the middle there? Because that's going to be important. So to get that, 6.6 .6 plus 2.1 divided by 2. So the average of those two numbers gives me 4.35. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to sketch in my sine curve. But what would be nice to get it going well is to get the point in here where it's going to go through my midline. So somewhere about here. So how will I find that point? Well, so I'm going to have this. This point is going to be halfway between the maximum water level and the minimum water level. So again I'm calculating an average of two numbers. So 4.5 plus 10 divided by 2 is equal to 7.25. So 7.25, which is going to be quarter past 7 in the morning, is where this, this is showing up here. So now I can sketch in the rest and I'm starting to get a feel for what's going on. Notice that I haven't really started to write the equation yet, but we've actually got quite a few of the bits done. I can't yet see where is this point here. Now this point's important. I think of this as the zero point for my sine curve, for my model. So let's work out where that is. Right, well, we know that this distance here 
must be the same as the distance back to the zero point. So what I'm working out first is 7.25 minus 4.5 and that equals 2.75. Okay, so I'm going to go over that again here. The zero point here, sorry, the, the point where the sine curve crosses our midline is at time 7.25. Between 4.30 and 7.25, I've gone from my max to my midway point. So if I go back that distance, I'm going to find this point here. So now I say, well, 4.5 minus 2.75 is equal to 1.75. Right, now that is the most horrendously messy graph. So on the next slide, I'm going to draw out the version that we can do now, which has just got the key points on it. Okay, so here's my sine curve. I've got my midpoint midline going through at 4.35. Right, because that is halfway between the maximum of 6.6 .6 .6 and the minimum of 2.1. So this is water level. Right, but now I know, i figured out that the maximum's at 4.5, the minimum is at 10 o'clock, and so the zero point here is at 7, I keep calling it the zero point, this is at 7.25. So this gap in here is 2.75. So if I extend back to here, I can get basically the start of a full sine cycle. So if we take 2.75 off again, I'm going to get a key number, which is 1.75. So that's a key number because if you think about how I've transformed my sine curve, you can see that I want to know where does one full cycle start from. So think about the basic sine curve. I am looking for that point there. Where is that happening in my new modelling situation? And it's happening there. So we're ready now to write most of the function. Okay, so the function is going to have this form. My stretch upwards is 2.25 right so this is the amplitude right? so I've done a vertical stretch so that instead of going up to 1 above the midline I'm going up 2.25 so we'll have y is equal to 2.25 sine of something we'll come back to that the vertical shift it's really easy to get. We've gone up 4.35. So it's going to be plus 4.35. I'm going to write this out beautifully and cleanly on the next slide. Okay, but we've got the two vertical factors done now. Now, we've got the horizontal shift done as well because I've found the starting point for the cycle. So I have moved along rightwards 1.75. If you start with the sine function up here in the top right corner, we start at 0, 0. The start of a sine cycle here is at x or t equals 1.75. So it's going to be x minus 1.75 in there. What a mess. Okay, um, I'm still getting used to how to do these. So what I'm finding is I just haven't got enough room to get an equation on the same slide as the graph. So I'm going to write this out again on the next slide, so just be patient. Okay, here comes the next slide. So I'm going to do a small version of what we've got. Right, so that point there we've got at 1.75. So the equation so far that we've got is this. y is equal to 2.25 sine 
something x minus 1.75 plus 4.35 okay so that's my vertical stretch the 4.35 is my vertical shift the minus 1.75 is the horizontal shift the last thing I have to do is to work out the scale factor so the horizontal stretch now usually one period of a sine curve is 2 pi but one period here is going to be from here to here and then from here to here so it's going to be four lots of the 2.75 that we found so that number there is 4.5 so 4 times 2.75 is 11 okay so one full cycle is 11 hours the other way you can get that is by thinking about twice the gap between the min and the max. Okay, As you do more of these problems, you'll get your own ways of doing it. So four lots of that is probably the easiest way to see it when you're starting out. So we are looking for a scale factor that relates 11 to 2 pi. And we've got a much more stretched out graph here because instead of one cycle being 2 pi long, which is... Six point about 6.28 something something ours is 11 so our cycle needs to be scaled like this 2 pi over 11 and that's the last piece of the puzzle so we can pop that into our equation 2 pi on 11 ok so just on the last slide I'm just going to make sure you've got the final answer so we get y is equal to 2.25 sine 2 pi on 11 x minus 1.75 plus 4.35 okay again the four factors in the order of easiness that one is the upwards shift that one is the vertical stretch so here's the vertical shift This one is the horizontal shift, so that's where we find the zero point for our cycle. And this one is the horizontal stretch. Okay, I think probably the one that you're going to find the least intuitive till you've done lots of these is the horizontal stretch factor. So if you are finding that really hard, remember you can go over in, um, in the New Lake the earlier work on transformations where it's just um, not in context. So looking again at pages 6 and 7 if you need to do that. I'm going to come back later on today and model some more for you.